Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There, there is, is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One, one God, God and Father, Father of all. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the A reading from the first letter of the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, through many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For one in the Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks or slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the day of Pentecost last year, St. Luke's parishioners may remember that we worshipped in the school auditorium. It was the first Sunday where we were displaced from the church because we were installing air conditioning. I remember well, and perhaps you do too, the joy of Pentecost last year, crowded into the school auditorium with a makeshift altar, baptisms, and a portable organ accompanying our wonderful choirs. Last Pentecost, we thought that managing summer worship in a different location was challenging. This year, as we in New York City are still going about our lives masked and gloved, there are previously unimagined restrictions on how the church operates. But the Holy Spirit is not chained or quarantined, even when we are. After the ascension of Jesus, the first disciples cannot operate in the ways they did before. They are propelled into what's next. God gives the Holy Spirit to the disciples for the new life of the church. The Holy Spirit is always given for today's life, for the life we live now. I was reading this week a thoughtful reflection by Richard Rollheiser about Pentecost. Rollheiser says, that Pentecost is part five of God's work in Jesus. Good Friday, Easter, the 40 days, Ascension, Pentecost. It is a saga of lost and found and spiritual adjustment. On Good Friday, the disciples lose Jesus' human life. On Easter, life is restored. In the next 40 days, the disciples discover resurrection life. On the Ascension, they lose again the re resurrected Jesus and then at Pentecost, another kind of life pours into them. I think we can actually go back further than Rollheiser for an even larger context. We can see this cycle in nature, in the science of evolution. We can see it in nations, in forms of government, in institutions, in churches. We see this in our own lives, constant evolution and change, change as evidence of life. In every kind of creation, natural and human-made, each phase requires a letting go of what was. When there is movement into something new, usually we cannot get to the new without letting go of the old, either willingly or unwillingly. Life and God only move forward. Do not hold on to me. Jesus' words to Mary Magdalene in the garden on Easter morning apply to all disciples much of the time. The first disciples didn't have a choice about the ascension of Jesus, yet an even greater spiritual blessing and equipping for mission was waiting in the wings. The old went before the new came. The dovetail between old and new isn't always neat and easy for us. The important thing in faith and life is that we, as we grow in Christ, we become willing to let go of what was so that we can fully embrace what is coming. This is so hard to do. We know what was, and even if we didn't like it all, we knew it and we were used to it. I said earlier that the future comes whether the disciples are ready or not. The ascension happens to them. But spiritually, in fact, in our daily life now, we do have a choice. We have a choice of spiritual attitude of disposition. Do we go kicking and screaming into what's next? Do we fight, deny, resent, cling? Do we keep all our weight on our back foot so that we cannot walk forward? 
no matter what we say about embracing the new normal? Or do we participate in what God is ushering in? Can we open our hearts to trust that the future God is right now breathing into his beloved creation will have its own truth and beauty? This is not the 200th anniversary year we planned, but as we emerge and are able eventually to gather together and celebrate whenever that time comes, we may discover an exuberance and a depth of gratitude beyond anything we could have imagined or planned. Can we give our heart to whatever God is providing and will provide in trust and without reservation? In the Episcopal Church, and especially in an Anglo-Catholic parish like St. Luke in the Fields, progressive though we are, we are still rooted not only in scripture, but also in traditions of sacramental piety that extend back at least to the apostolic traditions of Hippolytus, written down around 200 AD. Our baptismal service, and especially the Easter Vigil, come practically word for word from the earliest years of the church. This is an amazing heritage and a gift that we rightly honor. It is tempting, and I use the word advisedly, to prejudge some aspects of contemporary practice as what someone called the church of whatever's happening now. And yet, Pentecost is exactly that. The church is always being equipped for what God is doing now and next. The Holy Spirit is always trying to align us, messengers, with today's mission in the world. God is an opportunist when it comes to people and resources with whatever and whoever is available. That will be put to work. So we Zoom, we use webcams and all available means. It's all Pentecostal activity. I find that this Pentecost morning, I am hopeful and wanting to give my heart to the spiritual blessings God is even now bringing to this world today in these terrible times. I hope you are hopeful about the future too. For sure, part of me clings to what was and wants to go straight back to pre-pandemic church right now, as though waking up to find COVID was a nightmare. Of course, our hearts and minds cling to what was, the first disciples struggle with that too. And we can pray for the depleted, discouraged, unhopeful parts of us to be filled with God's own energy this Pentecost. We can pray for the desire to trust God's spirit more deeply and to experience that spirit moving in us. In faith, we can be certain that God will continue to sustain the church in ways we cannot e even imagine any more than last Pentecost we could imagine today. In the center of this pandemic, we are still here. God is still being worshiped and praised and adored and always will be. As Jesus says in today's gospel, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. May it be so among us this Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I, I do. do. Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third day, day he rose again. again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I I will, with with God's God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I I will, will, with with God's God's help. help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, I ask your prayers for all who are ill or in need of intercession, especially Jasmine Eisenberg, Beverly Smith, and all who are on our parish prayer list. I ask your thanksgivings for the birth of Mason and Sadie to Luke and Amanda Keigel. I ask your prayers for those preparing for baptism, confirmation, and reaffirmation, and reception. I ask your prayers for those preparing for marriage or the blessing of a civil marriage, especially Katie Chirico and Brian Mizuguchi. I ask your prayers for all those expecting the birth or adoption of a child. I ask your prayers for those who have recently died, especially Glenn, Kathleen Latos, Anne Weisberg, Harold Blake, and John Shea. I ask your prayers for those whose memorial of death falls this week, especially Vivian Distin, Betty Gree, Jean Rodano, Rosario Chuck Savarino, Alice Marsh. I ask your prayers for our parish of St. Luke in the Fields, that we may continue to be a growing and loving community, that we may continue to be a living witness to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ here in the village, in the city of New York, and in the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, I ask your prayers for the parish of Christ the Redeemer in Pelham. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, I ask your prayers for all members of the Anglican Communion around the world. And as always, I ask your prayers for our companions in ministry at Sogon Cathedral in the Diocese of Matlasane, South Africa, and the Church of St. Mary the Virgin, Primrose Hill, in the Diocese of London. I invite you to add your own intercessions and thanksgivings at this time. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear our prayer. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our our prayer. prayer that he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he may guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may come to share in the heavenly kingdom 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Luke, our patron, and all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks 
and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples, to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood, and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we proclaim, proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant, Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, Blessed Luke, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, 
and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now Now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let let us keep keep the feast. feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you you have have graciously graciously accepted us as living living members of your your Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.